Hey everybody, I am Nick from Snap Forward and thank you for watching us again this week. And this is Chrissy Gipko. Hello. She's joining me this week. She's going to talk to us about a few things. You have uh, give them a sneak preview. I do. We're going to talk a little bit about building a voice for social media branding. And also I think we're going to talk a little bit about webinars. Yeah, how you guys are utilizing. Management. Yes, how you're utilizing your webinars. Um, do you want to give them a little bit of your history? Sure. Uh, born and raised in Western Pennsylvania, lifelong Pittsburgher. I've been in marketing and communications for a very long time. Uh, initially in animal welfare, I did some consulting for a while, and now I'm in financial services. Enjoying did, every did day. I, did I cover all the bases? That was good. No, that was good. You were. Uh, did you mention? I was reading a note here, but did you mention you were a professor also? Uh, no, I didn't mention that. I, for about 10 years, I was an adjunct professor at Duquesne, where I taught English. And uh, I've, taught, I've taught at other places, too. But that is a, it, it really informs everything I do on the marketing front. So it's a great marriage of professions. Yeah. It's always good for me to bounce things off of you and tell me how yeah. bad that sounded. And I always have to promise people that I'm not editing their emails when they send them. Which you, <laughs> Or quietly judging. Which you are? <laughs> no, just yours. Oh. Okay. All right. So, um, so I'm gonna. My beer today is the Guinness Black Lager. Uh, can't normally find it very often. I when I first tried it about a year ago, I really loved it. So I thought I'd go at it again. Now that I'm bigger into IPAs, and I'm gonna say um, not as much of a fan now. And it's probably no. why it's you can't find it very much. No, it's got like a kind of a, it says it's, you know, cold brewed with roasted barley and you can sort of taste that. It's almost like a coffee kind of flavor to it. Oh. But, um. Do you like this better than what you had last week? No. I'm, I'm really on the IP train right now. Okay. IPA train. Good so, yeah. That's why I didn't bring you any wine. I like wine though. I really like wine. I would have loved a nice red today. Well, I'll remember that for next time. I thought we were going to go highbrow. <laughs> what do you got? Uh, um, a mystery Moscato, also known in some circles as hummingbird food. Hummingbird <laughs> food. A little sweet, is it? A little bit. All right. All right. So um, speaking of beer, uh, there is an article that came out recently. It's a Redfin Realty website where they um, ranked Pittsburgh as the number one beer town. Oh. Yeah. Well, how about us? I know, right? Apparently, we have a fairly low beer tax, our medium home sale price being only $150,000, decent walking community, Yes. and the breweries per 100,000 people that are over 21, there are three for every 100,000 people. Oh, well, thank goodness. Yes. <laughs> and there's 256 active brewery permits, which wow. is... Um, I don't think I would have guessed that it was that high. Yeah. No, it's, well, there's a brewery. I don't know if it's some guy in a basement that maybe has yeah. something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, yeah, there has to be some sort of a requirement. That doesn't but it, mean it can't be good. Well, if you look in our area alone, there's Spoonwood right here. There's a new one going up in uh, 88 on 88 in Castle Shannon Boulevard, where McGinnis's used to be. Oh yeah. And then there's Hitchhiker. That's not a new one. They're opening a second location, I think. Oh, who's who is it? It's with an S. Maybe we should take happy hour on the road. I know, right? Where do you spend your happy hour when you're not watching us or hanging out here well, with I, us? I religiously watch the Nick Boris happy hour, so oh, I, that. I appreciate it. Uh, with my, my mystery Moscato at home. Where, most of my happy hours, I have to confess, are spent on my front porch right now. But on the rare occasion when we go out, uh, let's see, the last place we went, there's a pinball bar or pinball cafe in Lawrenceville. Really? Which was a pretty cool night they out. Had, they had like a really good brunch apparently. Yeah. With the Bloody Mary bar. But we didn't go for the brunch. Yeah. But I'm sure it's good because it was. It had a really cool vibe. It was a fun place to be. It was hmm. a bunch of parents out without their kids for a that's couple hours. Nice, so right? That's always nice. That's always good. <laughs> so my favorite article this week. Uh oh. The three things that intelligent people do. Or oh the, yeah. Right. So it's, I sent this to my wife today. They tend to <laughs> swear an effing lot. Really? Yeah, they, they tend to swear bleep. bleep. They, yeah, right. Um, they tend to be a little messy, which I am, I'm why, not. Why do we swear more? 
Um, Notice I'm including us. Yeah. Because yeah. you don't. Yeah, no, right. It's a good one. <laughs> because I think it's because like you just don't spend time trying to sound intelligent or sound like trying to filter yourself. You just say what you're thinking, and it's. I've also heard that if intelligent people say the word like a lot because they don't have enough time in their brain. Like they just don't have enough time to say. No. Yeah. Think of them like just stop themselves and say a better word. Wow. Like, like their brain is running so fast that they just can't. Maybe that's why I say um so stinking much in no, these videos. It's the word like. It's not it's the word like. Uh, if you watch Gary Vaynerchuk, he says like, like, oh, like after every like word. I say like Yeah, he time. drives me a little nuts. Yeah, the like, he like says him. a lot. And when they, when, they, when they subtitle him, they actually put the likes <laughs> in the subtitles. He's a genuine guy like that. I, 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 I admire the guy. He does incredible work. We, we, I first watched him here. Oh, that's right. With you guys. On our little social media yeah. work, virtual conference. We have to do that again soon. Yeah, when they let me out. <laughs> Like good behavior. Right. The other things, they tend to be messy, which my desk is messy, right? Not dirty, messy. See, my problem with this is what, it, I just, you can't use it as an excuse, though. Mm -mm. I, because what's the logic between messy and intelligent? Right. So it says I'm here, your desk is messy. I just walked by your office. I got a lot going on. Okay. If you don't spend too much time cleaning and organizing everything around you, your mind is obviously occupied with more important stuff. Absolutely agree. I feel like there's a logical disconnect there. I feel like that doesn't mean you're smart. It just means like you have something else on your mind and you can't clean. But why couldn't you also be incredibly, you're so intelligent that you're incredibly efficient and you can yeah. manage multiple functions, not necessarily at the same time because I'm not a big, I'm not really into the multitasking concept, but. I have more important things going on. You can prioritize and complete and then adjust and one of those things could happen to be just cleaning your desk. Too low on the priority list. What's the last thing that uh, people oh. do? Uh, stay up late. Oh, stay up late. Yeah. I did. I read that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I actually am naturally a night owl. I naturally would probably stay up till one or two in the morning. But with this whole four or five o'clock thing, I've been trying to You're do. You're still getting up at four. I, I have not been able to do it, but we've had some disruption in our house with guests and just things we've been, so I, I've not gotten on that train yet. I, my, my thing is that too much happens at night that can throw you off. So in the morning, between yeah. four o'clock and seven, I'm guaranteed that I have complete control over that time. Unless yeah. one of my kids wakes up early or something. Um, so the big news in social media this week is Instagram stories. Yes. So you're not biting on it. You want to stick with Snapchat. I don't. I'm, I just need to. I need a little more information. I like to make it. I I don't understand why they are calling it stories because I feel like that's such. It's a complete ripoff. A blatant ripoff yeah. of Snapchat stories. Right. That. Um. I mean, it has to be intentional, but I'm not. I haven't puzzled out the intent, yet. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt that they obviously know what they're doing, but I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. I. You know. I think that. Uh, I think they're trying to, I mean, I, I think they know that it's a major thing they're missing. I think people love Snapchat. Facebook bought Instagram, right? Correct. So, like, Facebook just wants to take over Snapchat. They, I, they tried to buy Snapchat at some point. I, they just, they, they couldn't buy them, so now they're going to make their own, right? I hope it's a flop. I actually don't because I can't get into <laughs> Snapchat because I, you know, like, I don't want to start doing snaps because nobody follows me and it's not... You know, where Instagram, I already have a built-in followership, so I can just start doing stories if I wanted to. Yeah. yeah. The way the story, I don't like how the way the stories are set up. The way it happens is even, like, I don't follow the same people. There's a reason I follow people on Snapchat, but I don't right. follow different people on Instagram. So these people are just popping up at the top, like, pop, popping yeah, up at the top weird. of your thing, and you just, like, tap through them. It's, it's just set up a little bit odd, and like, I some of these people I don't care. Yeah, the right. People I follow on Snapchat, I follow on Snapchat for a reason. That's why there's a different, separate app. You go to different a different, yeah. on that, on the Snapchat app, you, there's its filters, all the fun faces, like, yeah. you can send them to people. Well, it offers so much yeah. but you can't, can Instagram you doesn't. Can you send a Snapchat or an Instagram story to somebody, or are there only stories right now? Like, that's the reason. I know you can do it I to a yet. specific, like, you can see, make it so only specific people see it. That seems difficult. I don't know. Yeah, I, I haven't spent much more than yeah. five minutes on it so far. I like Snapchat because I can take a picture of myself, like, just like, hey, like, at work. Aerial selfie. Send it, you know, <laughs> send it to somebody. Like. Puppy selfie. Panda selfie. Yeah. I think, but if we're evaluating it, we also have to break apart personal use versus business yeah. use. And so they're going to be successful in different ways, depending right. on what, whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. So I could see from a marketing perspective how Instagram stories could give you an edge. 
With, um, and then if you can promote it with Facebook advertising. That would be super cool. Um, right. Personally, though, I, don't, I, I just feel like I get everything I want out of Instagram already. Yeah. I don't need I think I agree. I w it took me a while to get into Instagram, but I, I am liking uh, it I now. think Instagram is still my favorite. Really? I'm still Facebook, but I go to Facebook to get my news. I, liked, I like photography, though, and so I like the ability to quickly edit photos. Right. And then I discovered Facebook. They face do turn too. out really good. I don't <laughs> no, know if face... I discovered that. You're a better if, person than I. I don't know Facetune. It, it, it's like what the Kardashians use to edit their photos. Don't like those wrinkles? Yeah, that oh, is. really? Want to whiten your teeth? Yeah, you have a wrinkle somewhere. <laughs> Like but she might in like 15 like years, so she's really being nice proactive. Picture, but you look really unflattering in it. You just kind of like it up. You can even make your face skinnier. Yeah. You can thin <laughs> oh, out man. your arms. It's sometimes if you just look wonky in a photo, you just have to like fix yourself. It's so little. wrong, but it's so, so right. Yeah, it's I just get rid of the photo. Now you don't have to. I guess. Okay. I'll tune my face. Finally, you're welcome, Lynn. <laughs> so last thing um, with social media. Yeah, you're welcome, Lynn. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, in ad age, uh, apparently Facebook is testing mid-roll video ads yeah. for live. So someday somebody's going to be watching this and then a car commercial is going to come up? Hopefully. I, I guess. I think. I mean, I think it was inevitable, so they, they were just waiting to roll it out. Yeah, ironically, so we've been playing with a different application that allows you to stream live video from a computer, right? And it okay. gives you in high def rather than the squared off look that we have right now. <laughs> Uh, and in when you're setting up the feed in Facebook, it says do not run video advertising pre-roll or mid-roll. There's guidelines. You're not allowed to oh. run advertising on your live feed. So, and this, and so basically, they're telling you that because they want to do it, right? So yeah. they want to get they're a percentage. They're controlling right. everything. Right. Uh, lastly, before we get into what you're talking about, um, we mean? are well. We're upping our game. Uh, so we've been doing more video. Uh, we've been trying to bring more video in house I rather noticed. than contract it out, right? So we got the nice lights around here. We got the it, mic. It is very professional and fancy in here. Yeah, thank you. So we're doing better. Um, we uh, we have tried different cameras. I think we've settled settled on this Canon camera. Mm -hmm. uh, we had one that we were using, and the color was off, and it didn't offer microphone really? inputs. So. Oh. Um, now, we, we went with a Nikon for the past couple of weeks, and the video was really good, but the focusing was not as good as we would like. Oh. And so we took it on location, and it doesn't track moving objects very well, or not on vacation, yeah. we took it onto a, a job we did, and it didn't track objects very well, and it made noise. You could hear the noise in the video. Now luckily, oh. yeah, That's luckily we didn't, want, we didn't use any of the audio from the tape, because we just, it was all music, but this one is absolutely silent. Oh. And it records. So you really love the Canon. We're loving the Canon. Hashtag Canon. Yeah, right. Hashtag <laughs> Canon. Yeah, we're loving it so far. All right. So let's get into what you came okay. here to talk about. I was excited to talk about voice and social media okay. and sort of cultivating your brand. So what do you look for? Like, so when you talk to anyone or when you're doing your... Um, your social media for the company you work for now. Are we allowed to say the company you work for now? I, I think so, yes. Okay. I am the marketing and communications director for the Musunegi Financial Group. Okay. And so what do you, when, you're, when you're working with someone to build their, their social presence, what, where do you start? I think um, when it comes to your, your brand on social media and especially on Facebook, the two most important things are um, to be authentic you need to have a, an authentic voice, and you need to find the human element in what you do. Because I don't think, you know, we don't typically go to Facebook to look for a company, at least not yet, right. or a business. We're, we're still mostly going to Facebook initially to connect with people. So if I'm going to be a successful, have a successful business presence on Facebook, I need to be able to engage in that way as well. And I think that the, the thing that all that hinges on is, is, is your voice, the, the way you engage, or the style or the tone that you use when you engage with other people. Is Facebook your number one platform? It, for, for what we do, it is. Um, if I was in a different industry, I don't know that that would be, a, that I don't think I would have the same answer, but when you're in financial services, um, there's a lot of compliance oversight to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, there's, you know, our friends at FINRA. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it, it's very difficult to effectively use other platforms Facebook is is fairly user friendly for what we're trying to do, and also LinkedIn. Yeah, um, we, we 
we don't pursue Twitter too much because there's just so many regulations in place on our end that it's not it's not really fruitful. Well, and the way I look at Facebook, it's it's nice you can control more what's going on there from a business perspective. Uh, I don't, the way the algorithm is going on Facebook and business is being found less and less, mm -hmm. I find it more of a reputation building place. So you put, in, you put your content out there and you put your information about your business out there, not expecting that a whole lot of people are going to interact unless you have something really good to say or really engaging, which a lot of businesses struggle with. Right. So, you know, if I'm looking for a financial planner, I'm not going to interact with them a whole lot on Facebook unless I really have something bad to say about them. It's right. generally like not, not necessarily how I behave, but how a lot of people do, especially right. with car dealerships and things where there's oh. a lot of bad experiences. That's the place to go to vent. Right. So, but if you can, if you're a business that can lay out a timeline of quality posts that when right. I'm searching for you, I go there and say, okay, I, I see what these people are about. I like the culture. I like what they have to mm -hmm. say. And that prompts me to call you or contact you, right? I think so, yeah. And it's so important for us because we are a family-owned company. Um, family is a big part of our brand. So I think being able to engage with the community and show that side of our firm, show, I mean, we try to show our people and our, because we all genuinely like each other so it's fun you know there's an i think that comes to the surface i think it's hard to hide that mm -hmm. and facebook then becomes a really good venue for that now you guys with the finra regulations what are you not allowed to put out there we uh i always joke we we can never say we're good at what we do <laughs> <laughs> everything has to be qualified um but it's as simple i I can't use dollar signs on any of our marketing materials. I can't use piggy banks or sometimes I can't even use the word money. Really? One time we, we tried to sit, we, it, this predated me, I heard this story, but it was that they were trying to do something with St. Patrick's Day and the color of money is green and that got flagged because in some countries it's not. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty nitty gritty. So how do you, how does it work? Do you have to submit every post or do they just monitor your account? It's a little bit of both. It depends. It depends on what exactly it is we're trying to put out there. Hmm. Um, but they do. They monitor our social media accounts, and if there's something, for the most part, I know what I can put out there that's not going to raise any flags. If I really want to put something out there that I think might raise an eyebrow, I'll run it by them personally first, okay. just to make sure. Do you get a quick response there? Sometimes. <laughs> that's, and that's it makes it makes marketing and financial services really challenging especially with you know trying to be timely okay <laughs> um, so if I'm a client okay. and I am uh, the economy's tanking and I am incredibly happy because all of my friends lost a lot of money but you properly had me managed so I didn't and I said oh my god they just saved me so much or they thank you if i even just said thank just you for sheltering you me in the right now gives me palpitate like it, on my mic i'm getting palpitations <laughs> so i can't like even if so even if i said something in the middle of the road i mean it would i i couldn't say you know thank you so much for having my best interest in mind uh, that would that would raise a flag yeah, so you'd have to you'd have to hide my comment we'd hide it yeah what if i left a review because you can't hide reviews um we would have to figure out a way to get it removed. Wow. Yeah, it's a little tricky. It is tricky. A little bit of a landmine there. What about like Yelp and places like that? We we monitor them to make sure that there's nothing on there about us. Hmm. Well, does Yelp assist with stuff like that? Uh, I haven't had to call on them yet, so I don't know. Okay. I'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully I don't have to deal with it. Yeah. Okay. So, but it's even, I mean, it's tricky even when it comes down to writing copy for, you know, we were just doing a new brochure in the last couple of weeks and that was, it's, uh, and writing copy is probably one of my favorite things yeah. to do. And it, 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 I will say that having the compliance maze to navigate makes it challenging and a really, I mean, if you kind of approach it like a game, it's pretty fun. It's, you know, it kind of, especially if you like words and you like writing. <laughs> yeah, you know, and what you, you do. You got to puzzle it out. Right. It makes it interesting. Right. Wow. Okay. Nerd, nerd alert. I just totally outed myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, what you mentioned webinars as being one of the ways that you have been newly yeah. promoting the business. That is new for us. We do a lot with educational workshops. Um, 
I like it because it adds value to our existing clients' experience. It's a new way to introduce us to the community because they're always open to everybody. If somebody just hears about us or is referred to us, it's a good way they can kind of get to know us a little bit, like mm -hmm. low stakes. Um, but we wanted to reach more people. I'm always saying, like, you know, you got to get to people where they live, and they live on their phones or they live on their computers, and we started webinaring. So in a webinar, like, what would a sample topic be? Um, are you drowning in student loan debt is one that we did recently. You okay. Know, how to manage your student loan debt. Or we have one coming up called divorce without distress is it possible i would think not it, it's sort of a leading question I <laughs> but if you attend the webinar you'll learn that actually there's there are lots of options it goes into the four um, options for ways that you can do divorce in pennsylvania and when i was working on it, i actually learned a lot really I, my husband's probably watching now I'm, i wasn't not doing any advanced <laughs> research I wasn't doing any research no. <laughs> So when you do the webinar, is it an on-demand type thing, or are you doing them live at a specified time? We do them live, and we try to do, so when I set up our marketing calendar, and, and we're up to, with the workshops and the webinars and our events, I mean, we're doing like 50 to 60 of these a year oh, wow. total. And I try to run things quarterly, because that keeps me sane, and it keeps the options open. Um, so I almost treat it like a curriculum. And so I'll run it as a workshop, and then I'll also schedule it maybe the next quarter as a webinar. And um, we, we started trying to do them twice in one day, so we're doing like a lunchtime and an after work. So time. you catch. Yeah. How many people do you get to attend a webinar for you? Sometimes it's two or three. Sometimes it's closer to ten. Okay. I find it, it depends on the topic. It depends on the time of year. Do you find that you get leads from that do they contact you afterward or some people will and uh, we try to keep it open so that one of the nice things about the webinars is that we try to keep them really on schedule mm -hmm. and i think there's a benefit when you're having a workshop face to face and you can stay after and ask questions and there's lots to be gained from that but some people i mean that's it's also a time suck so right. when we do the <clears throat> webinar we keep it pretty concise it's very it's like a compact <clears throat> version mm -hmm. and that way if you have questions then you call and we'll set up, and the advisors are always happy to meet with people and talk about whatever their questions are, but it's a nice way to get people into the office too. How do you get the people to attend? Like, how do you find them? How do you source the people to get there? We do, we promote all, all of our workshops through, we have a, a pretty large database that we reach through email. Clients, prospects, um, other connections that we have, or we might send it to you and say, Nick, if you think you know anybody that's interested in this, send, mm -hmm. spread the word. And So things get out. It's act, it's a pretty wide net for us at this point. Do you do any, uh, like for us, we're big on, and it's funny because you mentioned this, there, we talked to a, just in passing, someone that worked for a financial planning firm and they do a lot of in-person seminars like, like what mm -hmm. you're talking about. And it occurred to me at that time, because they were doing a lot of direct mail. I think they said they yeah. do like 5,000 pieces of direct mail a month. That's a lot, right? And I was thinking like on Facebook ads, you can target specifically people that are of a certain net worth, uh, how big their household is or what age they are. And, you know, so you can yeah. get pretty specific with, with your target market. Is that something you guys have explored thinking about maybe doing advertising in that way? Especially because you and I have been talking about it lately. It's something that we're talking about more. We haven't started yet. We, you know, because, I think because my original experience in marketing was nonprofit. I'm like a, I'm such a budget girl. Like I'm so, yeah. if, if we can DIY it, if we can save the money, there's always another way. So I'm always kind of trying to be creative that way. And I really try not to spend money if I can avoid it. But I do think that the Facebook ads, the targeting, is is of all the social media paid options, I think that's the one that would benefit us the most. Um, I, I we think might do that. I, you know, I think that it's it is scary with, you know, people will opt in to do the yellow pages. Although many fewer are doing it now, but right. I remember when we did yellow pages ads, they were five hundred or a thousand bucks a month or fifteen hundred bucks a month, right? And we were one of the smaller people, so there were people spending three or five thousand dollars a month on yellow pages ads. Right. Oh. It's yeah. crazy, right? But it was like a tangible thing that you had you had this piece of paper that you could point to and that somebody could open up and find. When you're doing Facebook advertising, so there's a management fee that a company like mine would charge, which is not cheap, mm -hmm. but you have to design the ad, you have to monitor the ad, you have to target the correct people, and you have to work on getting that click-through rate as high as possible right. while making the click cost low. Uh, and then you have to pay for 
that actual advertising, right? So, I mean, you could quickly get to a two, three, four, five thousand dollar budget, and so for a lot of companies, it scares them. But if you can, I mean, you know, you know, and sometimes we've even done like a trial with someone and mm-hmm. just gave them a significantly discounted price plus the cost of the advertising just to, just to show them that it could work. Because at the end of the day, nobody opens up their yellow pages anymore. Right, right. I mean, no, I don't, when I get them, A, I'm annoyed that they're on my front step and I have to haul it somewhere. Uh, yeah, we, and yeah. And we just recycle them. So I think with the Facebook ads, you are actually, I mean, you know people are seeing it. Right. And I, and I think, I mean, I love online shopping. I think I'm a, I'm a fairly savvy shopper. I'm not sucked in too often. And there, uh, the way that it, my Instagram account specifically, the way that different uh, companies, and not, not big companies like Etsy sellers, must be doing targeted advertising yeah. onto my account. I've bought two things in the last six months really? from something that popped up in my Instagram feed. And I was like, yes, I do want that. Well, and it's amazing that now with the retargeting, even if someone comes to your website once, if you if you look at something on Amazon, you see it on the side right. of your Facebook account. It haunts the, you. Yeah, it haunts you, right? You want this cherry bitter, you know, right? <laughs> Is that what you've been shopping <laughs> Actually, for? I just bought one last week. That's what made me think of it. Um, so, you know, yeah, it, it follows you everywhere. But I think that, you know, the if you target it correctly and it's something that resonates with the person that is looking at it, you know, they're on their feed and they're sitting on their phone going like this and they, they, they're flying by and if they can be caught by that ad, then, you know, if, if you're targeting the right person, they'll, they'll click on that. Yeah. And you, they go to wherever you want them to go at that point. Well, and I think if you're a little bit smaller and independent, that, I mean, um, this is so anecdotal, so subjective here, but, you know, I, I'm always looking for something that maybe other people aren't going to have or like with a necklace or something like right. that. And if you're smaller and more independent and you're targeting people in that way, those ads stand out to me even more than a bigger store's ad would. You know, where if I'm, you know, if I'm shopping for clothes, I'm going to go jcrew.com no matter what. Right. But if I don't know who you are and you can reach me this way, then I think you've just had a lot of success. Well, you made a, a good point there. If it, if it looks organic, if it looks natural. So that's where, and that's probably the most inexpensive way that a company that doesn't have a lot of followers and maybe exactly. doesn't have a large budget, if they boost, if they have a really high quality post or something, mm-hmm. like say they do a video like this, a three minute video educating somebody on, you know, how, how, what chair to buy, you know, or why you want this chair over that chair, yeah. and they boost that post for 20 bucks a day. They could possibly spend $100 over the course of a week and get in front of the people that they want to who would normally ever, ever know, not know who this would chair salesman was. Would even heard of them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, hey, thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. Thanks for having it. me. It was fun. Yeah. We'll have to invite you back sometime soon. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Cool. Hey. Maybe food next time. You want hors d'oeuvres? <laughs> cheese board? Cheese cheese board? You want a cheese board for your wine? Charcuterie? Yeah. Right. I think so. All right. Well, maybe we'll have to, we'll have to hook that up. Yeah. We'll get a little Jade Grill sushi delivery. Put, put Brandon delivery. and John on that. Yeah, we need some nachos or mini sliders. or. Well, definitely the topic is going to be um, best beer town and where you like to eat. We should... Well, you know what? Maybe we'll maybe we'll have some uh, some sliders or something. Yeah, we have to we have to up the refreshment Wait, game don't now that do we. Don't do it next week for Tim though. No, Tim. I'll be bummed. Okay, Tim. Uh, sorry, Tim. Sorry, Tim. You can't get any food next week. All right, cool. Well, hey, thanks for uh, watching us, and thanks, Chrissy, for coming by. This was fun. Good, and uh, we'll see you next week. How do we wrap up? Do we cheers? Oh yeah, cheers. <laughs>